Hi everyone, today we'll be doing problem number 21 from the 2020 AMC 12B. This problem reads, how many positive integers n satisfy the value of n plus 1000 over 70 is equal to the floor of the square root of n. Recall that the floor of x is the greatest integer not exceeding x. So whenever we see floor problems like this, the best strategy is usually either to graph or to um, find some sort of way to use this floor condition by doing cases on the floor part of whatever we have. So this problem is actually not that hard if we do cases on the floor of n. And what that means is that if floor of root n is equal to k, then that means n is anywhere from k squared to k plus 1 squared minus 1. And those are the only values that would yield a floor of square root of n is equal to k. So n is in this set. And we have that n plus 1000 over 70 is equal to the floor of square root of n, which is equal to k. So if we substitute that n, then we'll get n is equal to 70k minus 1000. Now over here, we have n is equal to this, and we also have that n is in the set. So the smallest element in the set is k squared, and the largest element in the set is k plus 1 squared minus 1. So all we have to do is set this greater than or equal to the smallest element and less than or equal to the largest element. So it's greater than or equal to k squared and it's less than or equal to k plus 1 squared minus 1. So first let's just tackle the right hand case. We have that 70k minus 1000 is less than or equal to k squared. So that means k minus 35 squared is less than or equal to negative 1000 plus 1225. And all I did was complete the square over here. And so this yields that k minus 35 whole squared is less than or equal to 15 squared. Now to solve this inequality, we have to take the square root and we have to consider both the positive and negative part. Don't forget about that. So if we take the square root, then we have k is less than or equal to 50 or we have k is greater than or equal to 20. So this is our uh, solution set if we have it's greater than or equal to the smallest element in the set. But we have to use the other part of our inequality because not all numbers in this range will work. So let's go to the other part of the inequality. k plus 1 squared minus 1 is greater than or equal to 70k minus 1000. If we rearrange this, then we'll get that uh, k squared minus 68k is greater than or equal to negative 999, or sorry, negative 1000. And then if we complete the square from here, then we have that uh, k minus 34 whole squared is greater than or equal to 156 because 34 squared is 1,156 minus 1,000 is 156. And so if we take the square root over here and we consider the positive and negative roots, then we'll have that k is greater than or equal to root 156 plus 34, but k is an integer, so k has to be greater than or equal to uh, 47 because the because we have to take the ceiling of the square root of 156 because otherwise it's going to be equal to 46 point some decimal and we can have k equals 46 because it's uh, greater than or equal to that. So it has to be greater than 46 point some decimal. So the smallest value of k that works here is 47. And k is less than or equal to the negative root. So 34 minus the square root of 156 and that's equal to uh, 22 point something or sorry 21 point something since it's square root of 156 is between 12 and 13, but k has to be less than that, so we'll take uh, 21. And so we have this solution set of inequalities over here, and we just have to merge it with this one. So if we combine these two inequalities, what we'll get is that k is less than or equal to 21, is greater than or equal to 20, and k is less than or equal to 50, and greater than or equal to 47. And the way that we uh, took our quadratic and and 
And the way that we took our quadratic and we square rooted and made sure all uh, negative values were accounted for, because we did that, that means that all values in this range work. So that means for each of these k, there is an n that's within the set of k squared to k plus 1 squared minus 1. And this n is unique. And so that means every, one, every solution over here corresponds to one solution of n. And so we just have to count up the number of solutions now. There's 2 over here. And there's 4 over here. So our answer is equal to 2 plus 4, which is equal to 6. So going back to answer choices, we see that 6 corresponds to answer choice C, and we are done.